Hi there, Hatman here. So voting opens tomorrow and everyone's going to be pushing for your vote for the next week. Now a lot of people are going to be using today to start doing the push, but I thought since this is Sunday, I'm going to do a kind of light-hearted fun video. Now a question that I get asked a lot is, how many hats do you own, Kieran? So I thought today, I'm going to answer that question. So the technical answer to that question is 24. But that's quite a liberal number, and I usually take that down because I discount a lot of hats. Like, I don't count beanies or caps in that, and then there are other hats that I take out for various other reasons. Some, for example, are novelty hats, and others aren't even hats at all. So really the answer there is 18, but that's still quite a high number. So 16 of those hats are here with me at university. Uh, number 17 is at home. It's a straw Panama hat. I use it for a few weeks a year just to keep the sun off my head. I don't really tend to count it in that. And as for number 18, we don't talk about number 18. I also own a fez. Fezes are cool. So by far my most common hat is the trilby. I have eight trilbies. They're pretty fun and they're very versatile. So trilbies are characterised by having a brim that's turned up at the back and has a flat peak at the front, and it's usually quite a short brim all around. So the trilby saw a resurge in popularity a couple of years ago. They're very popular among indie artists, a few jazz artists, a few pop stars, rock stars, etc. Unfortunately, the last year or so hasn't been so kind to the trilby. Milady. Now, some of you might have just seen that picture and gone, hey, that's not a trilby, that's a fedora. Ah, but that's where you're wrong. This is a fedora. A lot of the confusion has come about because a lot of shops have named any hat with a sort of pinch front a fedora, which is pretty much wrong. There's what you might call a fedora family, which covers a lot of hats, but this here is the real deal. Now, fedoras have a flat brim, and it's usually a lot wider than the trilby. That's fine. Now, fedoras are primarily a, an American hat. They are, they were very popular with gangsters. Uh, you might see a lot of sort of prohibition era films with gangsters or detectives wearing fedoras. And uh, they're pretty damn cool. They're a nice casual hat that makes you look a little bit fancy, but overall pretty down to earth as a person. Maybe. Moving up from the fedora is the Homburg. Now, I like to think of the Homburg as the fedora's more successful but less popular older brother. Homburgs have a brim that's turned up all around, and they're much more formal than the fedora. During the 1930s, they were the go-to hat for politicians. Uh, notable wearers include Winston Churchill. And they've kind of gone out of style somewhat. Um, they're still pretty easy to get hold of, um, but really these two I've sort of ended up buying almost by accident, which was quite nice because they're both very nice hats. One of the most recognisable sort of hat is the bowler hat. Bowler hats are some of my favourite hats because they've just got such a lovely round shape and they're so fun and easy to use. So bowler hats again have a, a, a brim that's turned up all around. You notice the one I'm wearing actually has a sort of slight uneven spit. Reasons, basically. Um, and they have a sort of domed head. Now there's a common misconception that the bowler hat was a rich man's hat. And although history has sort of declared that and towards the end of the 50s and 60s when they were worn more by professionals, the bowl hat came from a working class background, but it was a working class fashion icon. So it wasn't an upper class thing at all uh, until much later on. The bowl hat came around more towards the mid 1800s. Talking of the 1800s and the Victorian times, that leads us on to our last sort of hat, the top hat. The top hat is one of the most instantly recognisable hats in the world. It has a brim that's turned up and it has a flat bit that's raised above the head and they are always hard. Now the top hat started off as an ultra formal hat because it literally makes you look bigger than you would without it. So I'll just demonstrate this to you. See, I'm much shorter now. Overall, it was a simpler status and that's why I got adopted by many politicians and by many members of the royal family. Over time, it's become more associated with magicians just because of the sheer amount of space in the hat that you can fit stuff into become much more of a showy piece and much more of a sort of frills attire but its origin was very much an ultra formal ultra serious trying to be powerful nature what about you do you have any hats tell me in the comments below and since it's election week why not vote for me go onto your my Behan portal click on one of the links on the side where it says elections and when you get to housing community the number one in the box next to kieran hatman campbell keep your thinking hat on hatman away